Have you ever wondered what Can't Let Go, Geometry Dash's sixth easiest level, would look like if it was an extreme demon? Don't lie to me, I know you did. In this video, I'm gonna take you with me while I turn Can't Let Go from this into this. Featuring crazy dual gameplay, challenges of the dark, and straight fly. Let's begin. It is finally time that we super buff Can't Let Go. I don't know about you guys, but this level personally took me like a lot of attempts to beat. It's such a huge difficulty jump from base after base. Like it's not too, too bad until you get to freaking this upside down part. I'm telling you, bro, everybody has struggled with this part at some point. But I'll tell you what, all of these dark black parts, I have some really fun ideas for. First of all, on a super buffed Vortrox level, we cannot have a single spike. We gotta, we gotta make it like three. And we can't have plain flat blocks with nothing on them. That is not the Vortrox way. I like making this little contraption right here because like, it's like the easiest way of making just a regular click harder because then you actually have to time the click. And what I think I'm gonna do, I'm gonna add spikes on this down here, even though you're normally supposed to land on it. We ain't doing that. I'm gonna make it so you have to like time it and land on the very corner of this and then jump up here because that jump is actually possible nope bye bro i can't get it did i already make this too hard come on we just started one eternity later oh i did it i did it okay so i just can't hold after hitting the blue orb i have to do like two really fast clicks okay <laughs> oh my god i'm so sorry to anybody who plays this <laughs> I'm going to put these black orbs here, and I'm going to move both of these downwards. So yeah, if you just jump up and don't click, you'll hit that spike and die. So you have to time the black orb and slam down just in time. Man, I love black orbs. They're one of the best orbs. Hmm, I got to think of how I could buff these, because I was pretty conflicted on this when I was like trying to think of ideas. But I think, I think I have something in mind. Later. Okay, I know this looks really weird, but trust me, it, it goes pretty smoothly. It's just about like timing, basically. There we go. Okay, I'm trying something a little funky here. I decided to put like a little wave portal in. Yeah, that's pretty cool and fairly hard, I would say. And I'm gonna swap out this yellow orb for not one, but two green orbs combined. So basically they both kind of work together as one yellow orb, except you have to click twice. So I'll have to click my mouse and spacebar to get past it. And if you're on mobile, you can still do it, but it's just kind of awkward, but it is possible. All right, check this out, check this out. So I, I made them and they crunch you, which is all fun in games, but like I have to figure out a way to make it not eat you. Oh my God, wait, I have it. I have an idea. Okay, so if you like hit these orbs just right, you could like land on the top and jump and then you jump on top of the mouth. Oh, yeah, and if you even jump late off of it, you can actually make it all the way to this block. I actually really like that. I'm happy with how this is turning out. Okay, so I think for the switch to red in this song, I'm going to change the game mode to robot because it's just the best game mode ever. The first course of action for this red part or dark pink, whatever you want to call that, doesn't matter, is slamming spikes all over the ground. Okay, okay, I like what I got going on so far. I think I'm going to try something weird here. I'm going to get rid of this yellow orb and just put one green orb there. And I'm just going to extend some like green orbs between all these yellow orbs. Because let's be real. Everybody playing can let go has hit this first yellow orb on accident. So we, we got to be true and make this hard. Oh my god, okay, okay. Wait, that actually works. It's kind of cool looking too. They just have like a caterpillar of orbs. Okay, I think I can get away with putting a little spike here. So then right after this little shenanigan, you have to jump up right away and make it through there. But let me actually like test it. What? What? Okay, I'm glad I did that because... That's the beauty of playtesting your levels. You get to find out if stuff like that is possible on accident. I think that should fix it. And if somebody somehow finds a way to get past that, then congratulations, you found a secret way. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not, I'm not fixing all that. Ooh, and I think I'm gonna try something different. I'm gonna put a green orb here, a green dash orb, I should say, and curve it downwards. And then I'm gonna put a red pad here. So for this little section, you're gonna have to know how the gravity and geometry dash works. So by just holding the dash orb to this platform, you will not be able to go down in time since your gravity will still be moving this way. Man, I feel like a physics teacher right now, bro. Anyways, if you hold longer and go down here, you can actually manage to hit the pad. So yeah, 
Physics lessons with Vortrox. Ooh, look at that. We're almost at the dark part. Okay, so for the upper section, I kind of just added a bunch of little mini spikes everywhere, you know. But I kind of forgot that user coins exist, so I got to figure out what to do with these. <laughs> I kind of do have an idea, but I don't know if I want to, like, stay faithful to the original level or if I should just be absolutely evil. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie. I'm taking the absolutely evil route. I'm Seems easy enough. Anyways, we've finished the beginning, and now it is time for the dark part. I think I have a really cool idea for this that I just came up with right now. So we're gonna do some experimentation with a dual portal. I don't often use this in the super buff levels, but I think I have an idea that'll make this worth it. Also, something that's always triggered me about this part is that the drop of the song kicks in like way later than the gameplay. Like, just, just listen. Like, you've already done two jumps by the time the... Bow, now, 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 like, that starts. Like, why, why did he not just, like, delay it a little bit? And plus, it's a problem in the actual level, too. Like, when you actually go into it, you barely have any reaction time to jump off of that first platform. Which is just another reason why Can't Let Go is such a big difficulty jump from base after base. But anyways, let's get back into it. I might just do the world a favor with this one and extend this cool looking structure outwards. And I'm gonna do the world another favor and just add a corner piece in there. And this gives me more time to set up the dual gameplay. So check this out. You'll be the cube and the robot at the same time. So instead of just clicking, you have to like calculate every jump in order to survive as the robot. And this opens up a lot of opportunities for like using both players for different things at once. Like for example, check this out. Like I can hold, hold the robot, keep holding as a cube and still go up like that. Cool part about this is I don't necessarily have to put like a bunch of spikes or crazy gaps anywhere because having to control the cube and the robot at the same time serves as such a weird challenge that I'm really happy with. Like, even if you're not great at the game, I would encourage you to try this out. And what I'm going to do with this part is add, like, keys that force you to take both pathways. So, see, I got a lock on this so you can't get past. But if you collect the key, you can. That is the beauty of toggle triggers. And after a lot more work, I've made, like, this dual corridor where the bottom is robot and the top is cube. And you have to focus on both at the same time to make sure you don't die. And this is what it looks like in normal mode. So after this crazy dual madness, I'm just going to go back into regular robot. I'm building these big old pillars to come down to the yellow orbs. <laughs> Bro, after I hit the yellow orb, look at my cube after I hit it. Anyways, enough fun and games. I want to really embrace this like darkness feeling it has, so I have an idea. After much trial and error, I think I've finally decided how to make the shading thing go. So using some glow objects, I was able to make like a circle that looks like my vision is like hazy and dark, you know what I'm saying? Then after all that, it's more typical robot gameplay. Well, I wouldn't say typical, but like as far as Vortrox super buffing levels go, Ship time! I've started off by adding some saw blades into all this empty space, because we don't want that. And I've extended these structures to make a quick little straight fly section. But don't worry, there's more where that came from. I think I'm actually going to make this a mini ship here. Now I'm going to put these all the way up. Oh, and I have an idea actually, so I'm going to make it like that which is obviously impossible, but I'm gonna remove this and get some of these line objects and put them in just to be an absolute troll. <laughs> so now we got a fake block that looks completely real if you ask me. And this coin, I think the obvious thing to do here is just to put this thing up and I'm just elongating the crap out of this structure. Boom, pick your poison, up or down. Too high to get over, yeah, yeah. Too low to go under, yeah, yeah. Stuck in the middle. I forgot the next lyric. Okay, so that's the bottom path, which I'm certain is possible, but uh, it's the top path I'm a little worried about. Yeah, no, absolutely not. Wait, I have another idea, though. I'm gonna copy the fake block I made over here and move it up here. And then I'm getting rid of the spike, putting in this fake spike I made. And boom, it looks totally real, but it is an imposter. Yeah, it's so nice. You could like squeeze in there now and go inside the structure. That is quite silly and comical. It's honestly not that hard though. Like the fact that I'm doing it consistently says a lot. So I think I'm gonna like move over this coin and put it behind some like really hard straight fly. Hold the phone. I think I accidentally just made the layout for a nice club step monster. 
And I'm selecting the whole guy and putting him in a group. And I'm gonna put it so if you do try to take the coin route, it moves him up by two blocks. And I'm gonna put it on touch triggered, which means that it'll only work if you physically touch it. So by going down here, it just stays down there. But by going up, it moves him up at the price of having to do a really weird timing to get into it. And I decided to give this club step monster guy some like ear looking things just so he has more of an identity of its own. And I know, I know you all are waiting for me to name this guy. Well, I've decided I'm putting that honor in your guys' hands. Name option number one is Club Club. Option number two is Big Stepper. So I need all you guys to have a war in the comment section right now. Comment Club Club if you want him to be named Club Club, and comment Big Stepper if you want him to be named Big Stepper. Whichever name has more comments will be his official name. Good luck to Team Club Club, and good luck to Team Big Stepper. Moving on! Guys, I think I just made the worst duel of all time. Bro, I, I don't even have to buff this, just, just look. So the top, you are a mini wave, and the bottom, you are a ship, a mini ship. And together, you have to somehow maneuver both to get through this freaking section. I don't even know if this is possible, actually. This is like some frame-perfect type stuff. No, I keep getting so close to the end. Oh my god, oh my god! Oh my god, I did it! Oh my god, okay! Holy crap, it actually is possible. That's like one of the biggest brain fart things ever. Oh my god. Dude, this is crazy because I don't even have to move any blocks in this part and it's already like extreme demon difficulty. It's time to super buff the hardest part and can't let go. I was actually thinking of taking inspiration from this part in Geometrical Dominator. This part is absolutely notorious for just being impossible to get past as a new player because the memory is just crazy. But I think doing something like that with these blocks would be cool. Like every time you jump on one, it like lights up white instead of rainbow because it's like the can't let go vibe. But first I want to actually do the buffs and then I'll do the pulses. Oh, and I just remembered I have to do the coin route. Oh my God. I just got such a silly idea for this. So if you remember from my last video where I challenged the best Geometry Dash player for $100, I had one extra challenge at the very end of the level I made for Zoink, and he could win an extra $50 if he did a frame-perfect, crazy hard wave click. So how funny would it be if I made it so that for this coin, you had to do that absolutely ridiculous wave timing. Yeah, that's totally fair and balanced. Now it is time to geometrically dominate this part. So the first thing I have to do is select every structure and put it on its own color channel. So this structure group right here, I'll put on 12, which is the next available color. Then I'll put this little group of objects on color channel 13. And after putting every structure on its own color channel, I can place down a color trigger way farther back in the level, set it to black with zero fade time, and then set the color ID to my target. Copy paste 13, copy paste 14, copy paste 15, and so on. And there we go, I've successfully changed every single structure to black. So now the structures will be black and blend in with the background, but they're still there. And with the use of pulse triggers, I can make them pulse white like this. By just targeting the same color ID, making it white, hold for about 0.2 seconds and fade out for 0.5. And with enough copy and paste, we have this. That leaves us now with just the final part of the level. I just realized something really weird. So for some reason, Robtop put in two background triggers that are literally the exact same color. Like this one doesn't even change the background. Like it starts like this and you get to the end and it's still the same color. But I mean, Robtop already put it there. So I'll try to make use of it, I guess. I don't know why it's there. Maybe I'll go back to like the pink it has in the beginning over the course of the 10 seconds. I like that, I like that. And single spikes are simply not allowed. Every spike at least needs a partner, maybe two partners. But don't get me wrong, I don't support polyamory. So we're gonna like split them up a little bit. They're not allowed to be truly together. Real quick, can we just talk about why this spike is like hanging off the edge here? Like I just don't understand what Rob Top is doing sometimes. And also if you go to the very last thing in the level, this structure is not connected to this why Rob top just why there's not even a reason for that because the spike is in the regular spot he literally just moved over this block one space for no reason 
L game developer for real. Just kidding, Reptop, I love you. <clears throat> Anyways, uh, I think I think I'm gonna play off of this. I'm gonna copy and paste it and scale it down and rotate it and get an even smaller one and place that here too. And get the mini, mini, mini one. <laughs> there we go. Now it looks like the spikes are all falling down. And that actually serves as a buff a little bit because these spikes are poking out here. And for my loyal fans who watch all of my super buffing videos, I know you've been waiting for this moment. It's Fitzgerald time. Can I get a hello Fitzgerald in the comments? Because we got a Fitzgerald right here. Everybody say hello Fitzgerald. The absolute legend of a monster. And the absolute icing on the cake for extreme let go. Oh yeah, I guess there's this too. Uh, let me just do that quick. Thank you if you made it this far watching and you watched me build this beautiful level. And it's now finally time that I showcase this. Hope you enjoy. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I really appreciate all the support you guys have been giving me. It's been amazing. And thank you so much for 200,000 downloads on Hello Fitzgerald. Wherever you are in the world, I hope you have a great day. And if you want more from me, you should totally watch this video YouTube is recommending you on the screen right now. Because YouTube thinks that you'll like that video, and I think you'll like the video, so that's some pretty good vouchers, I'd say.